Welcome to part 5 of this G.I. Joe A Real American Hero series focusing on vehicles and their real world counterparts. But first, thanks for watching JL's Comics, hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our story. Up first is the 1992 Barracuda, the one man attack sub with real diving action. This was also used to make 2000's Man of War. The Barracuda was armed with a subaquatic bow attack cannon, steel slicing cutter fins with lethal quick slice barbs attached to the hull, as well as long range titanium reinforced shredder torpedoes and a high impact polyconic torpedo launcher with mega round capacity. The packaging proudly announced that the spring action launcher fired three long range surface cruising torpedoes and it could actually dive with a special tablet made of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and cellulose, which was a pretty cool gimmick. Micro or mini subs have, you may be surprised to learn, been in use for centuries. In 1775, David Bushnell created the Turtle, a one-man sub whose purpose was to affix explosives to the hulls of British Royal Navy ships in New York Harbor. The vessel transporting it was hit and sunk, though, before it could succeed in its mission. Then, during the American Civil War, in the waning light of the evening on February 17, 1864, eight men crammed themselves into a small Confederate submarine named H.L. Hunley. The H.L. Huntley was advanced for the time, but crude by modern standards. It was essentially a self-propelled metal tube with a bomb affixed to the front. H.L. Huntley and her crew quietly disappeared beneath the evening water off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, and made her way through the water just offshore toward a large Union vessel called the USS Housatonic. H.L. Huntley's 60-kilogram explosive charge on a spear affixed to the hull pierced the Housatonic's hull, and it exploded. But then something unexpected happened. The H.L. Huntley also sank, killing the whole crew, and for centuries, it became a great mystery as to why the H.L. Huntley sank. In 1896, the USS Holland's hull was laid down, designated SS-1, and was commissioned in the year 1900 in Newport, Rhode Island, with a complement of six, making it the first in the modern line of U.S. Navy submarines. The USS Holland had a reloadable 18-inch torpedo tube with three Whitehead Mark II torpedoes and an 8.425-inch pneumatic dynamite gun in the bow that fired what were called aerial torpedoes. And the first combat operations by the US in World War II were not in fact during and then after the attack on Pearl Harbor, they were just before. DD-139, the USS Ward, spotted Japanese Navy Type A midget submarines in the harbor off Hawaii in the early morning of December 7, 1941. She engaged the microsub, striking and killing it before the first wave of Japanese bombers hit Pearl Harbor, making it the first American shot and American-caused casualties of World War II. After World War II, the submarine captain named Captain George Kittrich retired, and then in the 1960s designed the K-250, whose name is the K in the K-250. K-250s are used for research, salvage, science, and private operations all around the world. The Cold War era Soviet Union also used microsubs as deep submergence recovery vehicles. In fact, some of the USSR's DSRVs were rumored to have tank treads on them, enabling them to crawl across the bottom of the North Sea and get lost in sonar with the bottom clutter. In fact, their India-class subs served as motherships for two DSRVs that were used by Spetsnaz and other Soviet-era covert operators. Up next on today's list is the Chameleon Swamp Skier, first used by Zartan in 1984. The Swamp Skier operated like a water strider, a bug that skates over the surface of water. In fact, the side profile, including the twin position padded handlebars, rigid high strength front skis, and high flex laminated rear skis evoke this very insectoid imagery. The Chameleon is powered by a Z12A microjet engine and comes equipped with high capacity water nozzle. There were color changing parts too that were affected by UV rays of the sun and the skier itself could break down and be disguised as a box of junk in a trailer. The real world inspiration for Zartan's Chameleon Swamp Skier came from the late 1970s Spirit Marine Wet Bike. The Wet Bike first appeared in the Spy Who Loved Me, a Roger Moore era James Bond film from 1977. The wet bike is more motorcycle on water than traditional PWCs. Personal watercraft was still a nascent and yet burgeoning market at the time. Wet bike sales stopped in 1992, meaning its life was a little more than a decade long, and eventually Arctic Enterprises, who owned Spirit Marine, rebranded as Arctic Cat, and with wet bikes no longer on the market, it allowed the jet ski, sea dew, and wave runner craft to take off in popularity. Though the wet bike was manufactured by Spirit Marine, the two-cylinder 50 horsepower 723 cc and later 60 horsepower water-cooled 800 cc two-stroke engine with 500 pounds of thrust, which pushed the craft over 30 miles per hour, was actually made by Suzuki. And because of that, the wet bike is often called the Suzuki wet bike. In addition to the Bond film, wet bikes also appeared in films like Police Academy 3. 
Up next is the G.I. Joe's Battle Corps Manta Ray, which was also used for the Night Landing Seal Raft, 2001's Night Landing Craft, and the Night Raft from 2014. The Manta Ray was a shark-proof inflatable commando boat equipped with an outboard motor using a wind-up speed prop, bulletproof topside canopy, and came armed with three lock-on torpedoes fired from a front-mounted, supercharged torpedo launcher. These boats allowed the Joe team a small profile, covert landing, and rubber raiding craft that allowed them to sneak onto beaches and into coastal, littoral, maritime waters controlled by Cobra and their adversaries, allowing a small fire team to hit the beaches on Cobra Island or get a crew up to the hull of a Cobra ship for boarding operations. These boats allowed the Joe team a small profile, covert landing, and rubber raiding craft that allowed them to sneak onto beaches and into coastal, littoral, maritime waters controlled by Cobra and their adversaries, allowing a small fire team to hit the beaches on Cobra Island or get a crew right up to the hull of a Cobra ship for boarding operations. The story of rigid inflatable boats or ribs begins in 1960s with Rear Admiral Desmond Hoare of Britain's Royal Navy. After Navy, the Rear Admiral became headmaster of Atlantic College in Wales, and this is where development of ribs began, and during the 60s, the college tested the X prototypes on the Bristol Channel coastline. Desmond and his team were awarded the patent in 1969, and from that moment on, Hoare's design revolutionized coastal warfighting, because at that point, special ops teams and Coast Guard units around the globe immediately saw the ribs benefit and saw how it would benefit their own operators. In fact, in 1971, Zodiac Milpro introduced their own FC-470 combat rubber rating craft, an inflatable boat, in a variety of mission-specific configurations, making them extremely adaptable and customizable. This FC-470, nicknamed the Zodiac, is about 15 feet long and can carry 10 passengers. Zodiacs can hit 22 knots with its 55 horsepower, two-stroke pump jet shrouded impeller-equipped motor operated by a designated coxswain. They're small enough to be transported in the air and durable enough to withstand a low-pass airdrop. They can even be launched from a dry deck shelter mounted to a submarine. In 1997, U.S. Special Operations Command, SOCOM, awarded USMI with a contract to develop the NSW, Naval Special Warfare Rib. These boats are manned by a captain and two gunners and can carry a SEAL element of up to 13 in their 11-meter configuration or carry 3,200 pounds of gear and equipment. The first models utilized a synthetic rubber made by DuPont called Hypalon for their inflatable gunwale collar, while the rest was constructed with steel, aluminum, and even wood. Sometime after 2010, the rib, the rigid hull inflatable boats changed from the Hypalon to a high-density polyethylene which gave a smoother ride to the passengers It was a stronger, more durable material than their predecessors, now able to operate at sea state 6 and sustained winds of 45 knots. The flat bottom style allowed for hydroplaning and the ability to navigate through really shallow waters. They're powered by either twin 470 horsepower Caterpillar 3126 diesel outboard motors or a single inboard that can push the craft up to 40 knots. The two gunners can mount 7.62mm M60s or 50 cal HMGs or even Mark 19 grenade launchers to the hull gun mounts. This gives plenty of protection and a full range of firing angles while the special operators are conducting their VBSS, insertion, extraction, or interdiction operations. The Navy's VBSS ribs are fully interoperable with the LPD-17 class ships such as the landing platform dock amphibious ships like the San Antonio class vessels since they have a launch and retrieval bale to drop and recover from the surface of the water. They're also compatible with the Mark V combat boat used by SEAL teams which brings us to our next craft on today's list. Enter the G.I. Joe's Piranha Attack Boat from the 2004 Valor vs. Venom line. This attack boat features three swiveling chain guns and twin torpedo launchers. The cool thing about this toy is that it is battery operated and can float and the motor actually works meaning it can putt around in a puddle. It came with shipwreck as a driver and he can fit in the boat underneath the roll cage and collapsible antenna whips. The idea of modern torpedo boats began in 1866 with Robert Whitehead, inventor of the self-propelled torpedo. Now ships could actually fire torpedoes at their enemies instead of ramming them with explosive tipped spears like the Confederates did with the H.L. Hunley during the Civil War. These fast boats and their torpedoes quickly changed the face of surface warfare due to their asymmetrical fast attack capabilities and maneuvering advantages over their larger battleship counterparts. It was because of these that destroyers were put into use, torpedo boat destroyers. Torpedo boats were used during World War I, and patrol torpedo or PT boats were used extensively in World War II such as PT-109 which had John F. Kennedy on its crew. These PT boats were then armed with the M2 Browning machine guns or even Orlikon cannons for anti-aircraft defense. The Japanese Navy called these PT boats devil boats which were eventually replaced by fast attack boats and yes we'll get to the devil fish in a moment. During the Vietnam War, the US Navy employed PBRs and that's not Pabst Blue Ribbon, that means Patrol Boat Riverine, and were used in places like the Mekong Delta and Saigon River. 
Eventually, however, these were replaced by the special operations craft Riverine and the Sock R are crewed by SWIC units, which is Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewmen. Sock Rs are capable of coastal warfare, skating along the surface of shallow water with its V-shaped hull and pushed forward with help from twin water jets and 440 horsepower Yanmar diesel engines. Sock Rs can be armed with M250 cals, 7.62mm M240s, Mark 19 40mm MGs, or Mark 44 Gau 17 7.62mm guns that, with its six rotating barrels, fire 6,000 rounds per minute, which can devastate anything in its path. Sock Rs can be transferred by C-130 or underslung under a Chinook. And like the NSW rib, USMI manufactures the Sock R as well. CIRC is another rigid hull patrol boat used by the US Navy and US Marine Corps. CIRCs provide tactical mobility and fire support to the Marine Air Ground Task Force in coastal environments and are also adept at recon, logistics, medevac, interdiction, as well as command and control roles. CIRCs are propelled by twin Yanmar 440 BHP water set system, which can push the craft up to 35 knots for a range of just over 250 nautical miles. Cirques have a crew of one and can carry up to 16 troops. They come with mounts for three HMGs and smoke launchers and high strength collars that provide a level of small arms ballistic protection. As part of the coastal riverine force, the riverine command boat used to be the go-between between between the shallow water and deep water units. This is the CB-90, originally developed for the Swedish Navy. CRF's RCBs can cruise at 35 knots with a range of 250 miles and just like the Sock R, the RCB comes with mounts for a variety of weapons and armaments that can lay down a devastating rain of fire. This also includes four mines or six depth charges. But the RCB was replaced by the Mark VI patrol boat from 2016 onwards, which are used by the Coastal Riverine Groups 1 and 2. The Mark VI was armed with two M242 Bushmaster cannons, like those you'd find in the Army's Bradleys, housed inside of the Mark 38 system, which is the Navy's version of the Crows system. This is the Mark 50 GWS, the gun weapon system. They're also armed with the 50 cal M2 MG stations, fore and aft of the pilot house. They can launch and recover ribs and launch RQ-20 Puma drones and even launch unmanned underwater vehicles. The Mark VI patrol boat can hit 45 knots or cruise at 25 knots for 750 miles before refueling. They can also park in the well deck of a WASP-class amphibious assault ship or even a Whidley Island dock landing ship. It sounds impressive, but these don't align with the Navy's pivot towards non-permissive environments and larger threats like China and Russia, which require greater firepower and added protection. More of these boats are expensive and rather challenging to maintain, and so in 2021, Vice Admiral James Kilby issued a general administration message saying that the U.S. Navy's Naval Expeditionary Command had to get rid of all 12 of the Mark VI ships by the end of 2021, with no replacement in sight. And that's because it's sort of redundant, given the other ships in the fleet, including the Cyclone-class craft and the LCS littoral combat ships. That said, I do think they have a place in the Battle Force 2045, aka future Naval Force study plans. Plans that include a large fleet of unmanned ships like Sea Hunter, the Orca program, or the Ghost Fleet Overlord program, but that's for another video. Then we move up to the 82-foot Mark V Special Operations craft, which to be clear is not the predecessor to the Mark VI. The Mark V saw service from 1995 until 2013. These larger vessels perform medium-range infill and extraction missions along with coastal patrol and interdiction in medium and low-threat environments. They can carry up to four combat rubber raiding crafts, and they come with the typical gun mounts, but can also use man pads to fire Stinger missiles. Mark Vs are powered by dual MTU TE-94 diesel engines along with two K-50S water jets to give it a competent acceleration and evasion capabilities. At the larger size, it does require a C-5 Galaxy to transport. Mark Vs are manned by five SWICs and can transport up to 16 operators. But the design was hard and incapable of absorbing shock as the hull rose up and slammed down while passing over waves. It led to a lot of bruises, injuries, whiplash, broken bones, and damage to the hull, which was a huge reason why the U.S. Navy wanted a replacement. And then there's this, the 1986 G.I. Joe Devilfish, later given a Tiger Force coat of paint in 1989 when it was renamed the Tigerfish. This is the G.I. Joe team's fast attack boat. It boasts two hull-mounted 50 cal chain guns with 3,000 rounds each or dual 20mm Mark 12 repeater cannons and four spring-loaded short-range anti-armor missiles or wire-guided Mark 78 Captor torpedoes. It's crewed by one and is capable of 43 knots in a range of 125 miles courtesy of the dual 110 horsepower water jet motors. The U.S. Navy uses its own variation of this idea, the low observable 41-foot combat craft assault boat, otherwise called the CCA Mark I. 
First deployed in 2012, CCAs have begun supplanting the missions undertaken by the Mark V fastboats and for medium-range missions in stealthy coastal surveillance operations in the Middle East and along the African coast. CCAs are docked at Coronado in California and Little Creek in Virginia, ready for Special Boat Teams 12 and 20. To be forward deployed for a mission, a CCA can be transported by a C-17 Globemaster, unlike the Mark V predecessor that needed the massive C-5 Galaxy for transport. And when we think of the Devilfish, we have to look at the shape. So we also have to mention the Sea Magic High Speed Patrol Boat, built for the Ukrainian Navy as part of Project Jura to patrol the Sea of Azov and keep the Russian Navy at bay. These have a top speed of 110 kilometers per hour and a range of over 500 kilometers, enabling a small attack boat to put three combat swimmers or five soldiers quickly into their AO. They're also capable of finding and destroying mines and staging surface weapons or subsurface robots, charges, and remotely operated vehicles. And with that, we've arrived at the end of this installment of G.I. Joe Vehicles and their real-world counterparts. What's your favorite vehicle on this list? Let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned in coming weeks as we continue to explore the vehicles of G.I. Joe and Cobra. Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.